Unbothered Moms, where we are shifting our perspectives and letting Letting shit shit go. go. My name is Bridget. I'm Kat. And today we are going to dive into some self-care. So really in relation to our skincare and what we do to keep our skin plump and somewhat (laughs) young looking or younger than what our actual age is. So we're going to dive into Botox, filler, lasers, and skincare as a whole. So if you're not into the injectables or lasers or it freaks you out or scares you, there's definitely some products that we have found with the help of our, we'll say, skin gurus <laughs> um, to, you know, you can get over the counter, you can get online. So really help um, just with redness, freckles, sun damage, whatever it dryness. might be. Dryness. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's a big one, especially this time of year. Exactly. So yeah, we're going to dig into that and um, give you some examples of what we do. And uh, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's dig in. So I would like to start with um, just like a little preemptive conversation of saying I was one of those people who was like, I will never touch my face. I will never do this. I will never do that. It was so taboo. Yeah. Of just because there's people out there who you can tell they have too much work done. Yeah. And I feel like for a while it was mostly celebrities getting it done Mm -hmm. and it was like overdone, overdone, overdone. And now they have these people out here who try to just like they make you look more youthful without doing a lot. And that's kind of where I go to Um, skin industry in Philadelphia. um, They're just amazing. They will not overfill you. They will not over anything you because their goal is to just make you look like you got nothing done, mm. but be like, hey, something looks different. Like, oh, you look hey, really good. You look really good right now. So I love that about them. So I just want to say, people listening, um, I hope you just kind of have an open mind because we were the people who were like, hmm, before we started uh, with any of these things. So I just had to say that first. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. Yeah. So um, I'd like to just start with Botox. Mm. So Botox actually, I, it's funny when I look back at it because I had like the accordion forehead. Oh, same. In all of my wedding pictures. Oh. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so I'm like, I wish I had started getting Botox earlier. And people say like, you're only 30, you didn't need Botox then. Well, yeah, because it is um, preventative. preventative. Because guess what? If your face is so stiff that you can't move it, you're not making more lines. Exactly. And like people don't understand that. And it's like, look at me. I don't look crazy. But guess what? I got a a lot of, uh, I got like 35 units, 40 units in my face right now. In my forehead and crow's feet. Mm. Um, And I think that's it. But I have very strong 11s. These are called right in the middle of your eyebrows. Yeah. And um yeah, and I feel like it's done wonders for my skin. It just looks full and kind of like hydrated. Mm-hmm. I also feel like for me, Botox, it makes my makeup go on smoother. It does because it doesn't sit in your wrinkles. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's I feel like it's a game changer overall and you don't need a ton. Like I'm very expressive. Mm-hmm. So if I'm making my 11s <laughs> or going up, like I'm due because my eyebrows can move. See, I I can move mine, but I always ask. I'm like, please don't do too much in my eyebrows because I still need to move those puppies. No, I want to be fro. Like I want Elsa. <laughs> Let it go to be frozen. Froze my face, literally. <laughs> and my derm hates that I because she's very. She wants to be natural. very natural. <clears throat> and I'm like, she'll like text me two weeks later. Hey, how's it going? I'm like, I can still move. I need to come back in. She's like, uh. Hmm. Yeah. So. And it doesn't hurt for anyone who wants to know. Botox. Well, I'd say the first time you get like a little pinch, mm -hmm. but then you get so used to it. And it's not, as I say, 35 to 40 units. It's not 40 stings. (laughs) No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. People wouldn't know that though. Right. You know. No, that's fair. Um, And I've also gotten Botox. So yes, forehead, the 11s in between your eyebrows, Mm -hmm. crow's feet. Um, But also I did the lip flip. Oh, I did that once too. Where they put it like right above your upper lip just yep. to give your top lip a little bit more of a plump situation. Yeah. The only downfall to that is that because <laughs> your yeah, your muscles are frozen. So it's hard to like 
do certain movements with your mouth, like drink out of a straw. Mm -hmm. And then it will just spew out the side. You look like you just went to the dentist because you're like, I feel it. Um, So that's the only downfall to that. And it only lasts a couple of weeks and it is quite hilarious. But just to make sure that expectations are set in uh-huh. case somebody decides to do that. Oh, yeah. So speaking of that, I did the lip flip once. I loved it. But then last time I went, they put some on the sides of my nose mm. um, to keep like my smile from going so big Mm -hmm. because I actually got lip filler last time. I have little Mm. baby lips. Cool. Fine. Um, But I'm like, you know what? I went there for under eye filler, which we'll talk about. Mm. And I was like, you know what? I'm already here in the city. I always see the work you do on lips and it's so minimal, but it just, they look like defined and hydrated. Yeah. So for me, I was like, you know what? I'm here. Let's do it. Let's spend some moolah. Let's get my little baby lips a little bit plumper. And um, so he added a little bit of Botox to the side of my face to make sure that the filler could sit and not migrate mm. um, with all the smiling that I do. So much smiling. <laughs> so much smiling. I'm like, I'm like Will Ferrell and the elf. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so that's another thing. What about you for fillers? I just do, um, I, well, I wanted fillers for a while and my germ, who's also one of my best friends was like, absolutely not. You have great lips. Thank you so much. Um, and you don't need it. I'm like, I know I don't need it, but I want it. I want to get them. So then she, um, she was like, Hey, I have a sample Mm -hmm. from, you know, reps and stuff like that do you want to try it? I'm like, yes, obviously. I've been asking you for years. Do I want to? I just did a little bit on my upper (laughs) and then a little bit less on my lower. And I'll say they're definitely more, they just look more hydrated all the time Mm -hmm. and just a little bit more like life to them. Yeah. But it's nothing like, it's not like balloon lips or blowfish lips or whatever. I still have my little, is this called a Cupid's bow? Yep. So my Cupid's bow I can still, you know. You have a hardcore Cupid's bow. Yeah, I it's do. It's sexy. Oh, thank you. It's like hard. It's like the biggest V ever. Like, come get, come get these lips. Come, get these. <laughs> come on, Cupid. <laughs> you got some Shout out lips. to Cupid. You got some good lips. <laughs> but yeah, so just a very little bit. I mean, that, it was interesting because I have fairly sensitive skin mm-hmm. in general. So right after, it didn't really hurt. And then the next day, I woke up and I was like, Oh my god. You were bruised. I was bruised. I was swollen. I could still talk and everything, but like I literally wore a mask <laughs> to drop my daughter off at daycare because I was like, these kids are going to be terrified. It looks like a swarm of bees came for me, <laughs> but just my lips. Yeah. And then so I walk they in. They wanted that honey. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> and they, I walked in with a mask on, and you know it's post COVID pandemic, so they're not like, as why common. Are you wearing a mask. Yeah. So the teacher's like, "Oh, did you give mommy germs?" And my daughter goes, "Well, no, her lips are just really big." <laughs> I was like, "God, damn. she told on you." Yeah, biggest narc. And that. then the teacher started cracking up, and I was like, "I got some filler." She goes, "I know what that's about." I'm like. Yeah, well, no, nope, here we go. It is what it is. So it I is. wore the mask for a couple of days, didn't show my face in public, and now we're fine. And now we're fine. And um they look good. Thanks. Yeah. I actually get um once a year I do under eye filler. And I think for filler, now, correct me if I'm wrong cuz I don't really know. For Botox, I know you're supposed to go like every 3, 4, 5 months yep. depending upon you know, mm-hmm. how it wears off on you. And obviously that's a personal and individual situation yes. for filler. I believe you only go like once a year. It'll be like n- nine months for lips. Okay. I think they say nine months because you're eating with your so mouth, more you're active. kissing, you're doing all these things. So, mm-hmm. um, the filler goes faster. Whereas okay. you're under eyes nothing happens with that. So I do that once a year. Okay. And, um, I just have like, it's kind of hollow under my eyes mm. and, um, it just adds a little bit volume so I don't look as tired. Mm. Um, and they actually have – the last time I went and got my under eye filler, the guy was like, oh, you know, do you care about the the color under your eyes or is it the hollowness? And I was like, the hollowness. So I'm like, I can put makeup on. Yeah. But there is this thing called RPF, I want to say, 
where I think they take your blood mm -hmm. and like get the platelets out of it. Yeah. And then like work it into your under eye area to help with the color. Yes. Oh so my goodness. Cool. That's what I was recommended. Mm -hmm. So my friend was like, I know like I don't ha I have some bags, but it's not super puffy. It's not hollow. It's mm -hmm. just like discoloration. I think since becoming a mother, it's just like <laughs> oh, this shit is exhausting. <laughs> yes. Yes. So she said the same thing. She's like, yeah, we can, you know, take your blood out, spin, spin the platelets and then put it back in your eyes and it'll basically take away that. And I'm like. Yeah, it's crazy. Freaking science, mm -hmm. man. So I feel like I want to do that next, but I, I wonder, I'd have to see how long that lasts for and what the cost is. And also, can you do it with the fillers? Good question. Exactly. Good question. Can you do both? Hmm. Yeah, because you don't want, maybe you do it first and then fill. I feel like that would be logical. Right. Yeah. But I, I mean, I'm not a doctor. Uh, me either. I have no <laughs> idea. I just sit there and I'm like, take my money. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, whatever you say. Yes, take my money. Um, But even beyond just what we do to kind of help us mm -hmm. feel better about ourselves. Um, cosmetic procedures like this are so beneficial to people who, you know, have um, self-esteem issues or problems. Like if you have, I don't even know, say if you got an accident or like something and you mm. have like a big dent in your head, like they could literally fill that in. Like yeah. not a huge dent, but I'm saying like any, anything that's a little misshapen or, um, I saw work that my woman did on someone facial rejuvenation to where she had lost a ton of weight mm -hmm. and then she just had like some sagginess in her skin and yeah. everything just looked kind of like pulled down and she changed her life through all these different things that she did and she didn't have to go under the knife. Yeah. So I think it's a good way to not do that extra step of like surgery i feel like it's it's more of a process and it's not so much of a wow factor if you go under the knife then you have to be bandaged up and the recovery like i feel like there's very minimal downtime from a recovery perspective very minimal unless you're me and you get lip filler <laughs> <laughs> and you have about three three day downtime oh yeah but it's all good i was pretty swollen too i was just like ooh, and then my lips are still tiny but we did it we did it, y'all. We did it. We yeah. did it. Going we'll back speak. next month. So oh. just for so here's the thing. I did it. It'll be like six months going back. So I know I said nine months, but you don't to make it be natural. Right. A little you, at a time. You built. It's about building on to it. So I'll just get a little bit more. Um and I like it. So it's cool. Yeah. And um yeah. There we go. Well, speaking of like you said like dense or scarring or anything like that um another thing that i really haven't dabbled in but i'm excited to try and start is lasers mm. so my again friend dermatologist skin guru lara she was like lasers can't fix everything but pretty much a lot a lot a lot of stuff yes so i am a laser junkie because um i'm very freckly mm. very freckly so even if I SPF the crap out of myself, I still, by the end of the summer, I'm like, connect the dots. They're all just starting to connect. I'm just one big freckle. Love literally. It. Tip of my nose. You see this? I have like one big brown spot at the tip of my nose. Yeah. Brown nose. You can tell that there's like a couple that just decided to come together yep. for a party on oh, yeah. your nose. Yep. We're just par <laughs> partying over here. So um, I do IPL once a year. So that is intense pulse light therapy. And that basically just helps you with um, texture of your skin and then also like pigmentation. Mm -hmm. So everything on my face is not natural freckles. Like I do have some dark spots or dark spots that need to go. So mm -hmm. it really just helps kind of brighten my face and get rid of the stuff that shouldn't be there. Yeah. And um, last year I went and I had BBL. Not for my butt, y'all. I remember that's, when you told that's me that's for that. myself, and I was like, "You literally don't need that." I already have a donkey. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, but <laughs> what are we doing? BBL. I had that with IPL, and BBL is a broadband light, and that helps with H spots, rosacea, and then sun damage as well. So we did the two at once, and my skin was popping. It just looked bright, looked yeah. amazing, and just to put it out there, this is something you want to do after the summer. Never get lasers during the summer mm. you know even hair removal lasers yeah yeah anything like it should be during uh the fall and winter months when you're not in the sun every day otherwise you're literally just getting the same damage <laughs> paying all that money to just kill your skin all over 
Um, but there is this new one called the Soft Wave that I oh that sounds see. nice, and it actually like helps you it's kind of like i don't know like a mini facelift which it's not but it just like pulls all your skin tighter Mm. and helps i think with collagen production but you can do it on your neck and your face i think anywhere but that's you know where where i focus and it just helps tighten you know if you have issues with your jawline where you're like i wish this was tighter they do it around there you know after like one or two sessions you're like oh my god i can i have a jawline like it's insane the stuff it does and it's cool because um it doesn't hurt they put a little numbing cream and same thing like you're able to just go to work the next day the same day mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but with that i did notice the ipl i would have like after a couple of days like it literally looked like my freckles were peeling off of me like oh, wow. little little like dark very dark spots on my face and slowly they would just fade away and my skin was like clear wait would they fade away or were they like falling away falling away interesting it's weird because mm-hmm. i know so another aspect of like a skincare would be like a, a chemical peel oh that's see i've always wanted to do that but then like we're on video all the time for work yeah and i'm like i cannot have my skin peeling well right <laughs> hello nice to meet you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pulling off a piece of my chunky skin i mean i guess if you were to do it october around halloween would be the time then you're just kind of you know in character of some yeah, sort you're like it's kind of <laughs> horrifying but <laughs> it is it checks out but that i actually asked recently um to someone i go to for botox and i said what is up with the chemical peel because i had like a special for october okay and i was like what you know i do the ipl what's the difference and she basically said it's like the same thing and if i'm happy with ipl stay but mm. there's because there's um it basically does the same but in a different way because you're using a chemical versus right. the laser okay and for me i'm like i don't want to be red and peely <laughs> for day i think it's for a couple of days it's, too it can be like a week i think of just looking kind of unwell <laughs> and then on the seventh day you're like oh ah, like a swan <laughs> um on the seventh day you rise again <laughs> you rise again and you look amazing but you just have to be shrek for seven days wow so i'm choosing the ipl yeah, I mean, I was Shrek for most of my adolescence, so I feel like I, seven You'd days. You'd be fine. Yeah. You'd be like, I got it. I did this fine. for years. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a champ. <laughs> Put me in the costume cost- contest as Shrek. <laughs> Shrek coming from the swamp. So have you ever got lasers, or would you consider? I haven't, but I absolutely would. Um, I just, I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I definitely would. I feel like in the summertime when I started to realize like what lasers were and what they did again, you're not supposed to necessarily get them done if you're going to be in the sun. Mm -hmm. And I try to be outside a lot, um, you know, get that vitamin D. So I didn't want to get the lasers, but I think I would definitely consider looking at it and I'm probably talk to Laura about it to see what would make sense for me. Um, and what she would recommend. Yeah. I think that's the other thing too, making sure that you're talking to a professional of what oh. they recommend for your skin type because everybody's skin type is different. So different. Everybody's going to get a different recommendation. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you don't have somebody that you trust already, you know, shopping around to see what different people have say. To. You have to. Mm-hmm. And that goes with the same thing with like Botox fillers. Don't just go to a place because yes. they're cheap. Like, heck no. Uh-uh. Do not get a group on. Do not get a group on. And I think that's the problem with um, people and why things are taboo is – People have gone to the wrong people. Right. And then they're out there. Yes. And you're like, wow, what happened? Like, that shouldn't look like that. So do your research. Mm -hmm. And if you have to pay extra to get it done right, that's the way to go. Yes. 100%. And guess what? This stuff is not cheap, but... It's an investment. It's an investment in your in your health, your skin, the way you feel about yourself. So you know that your skin is the largest organ. The epidermis, baby. On your body. You know what's you funny? You take care of it. You have to. H2O and some of this stuff we're saying. But also, just real quick, in high school, mm-hmm. <laughs> used to be like a running joke when I learned what epidermis was. And I'd be like, hey, your epidermis is showing. <laughs> and they would like instantly look at their crotch. And I'm like, you're an idiot. <laughs> or, you know, like the, when the elbow skin called weenus. Oh, yeah. That was a fun time. That's a fun one. Yeah. You know, Throw it back. But epidermis, it is your... Um, largest and you should take care of it Mm -hmm. and um, that's also why I 
really started to get into my lotions, mm. my skincare like regimen because I would literally just use CeraVe. <laughs> That's like, good though. It's good, but yeah. it's not enough. Right. It's not. So I would just use like an SPF one in the morning and then at night I use the night one like after washing my face. If I wash my face, I know I'm terrible. The fact that you Sorry. do that. But Sometimes you also... I fall asleep with nothing without washing my face off. But the fact that you do that and you don't break out infuriates me. I'm sorry. I can I can <laughs> wash my entire face, miss one small circle, and there will be a white head the next morning. Why me? Uh, okay, but you were also born with gorgeous lips, so let's talk about it. I guess you can't have <laughs> See, it all. See, that's what I'm saying. Okay, trade off, trade off. Yeah, so. Fair enough. You know? Anyways, <laughs> but that's good. <laughs> so now I've added a hyaluronic acid mm. in the morning. Followed by vitamin C. Vitamin C is the a godsend. Godsend. Mm -hmm. Like you need it. And then I do my SPF daily lotion. Okay? okay. And then at night I do the hyaluronic acid again with a retinol cream and then my CeraVe nighttime lotion. And it mm. sounds like a lot, but it takes two seconds, people. You just layer them. It's fine. Yeah. Like it sounds. I was one of those people like, I don't have the time for this. Yes, it takes one minute. It, yeah, it's not <laughs> literally hard. one minute. Yeah. And then I do a swipe of my Borboletta eyelash serum and call it a day. Borboletta. That's it's a amazing. Nice name. Actually, it kind of freaks me out because like Barbital, bar isn't that a drug? So it's kind of like, hmm, Barbital, bar I don't Where know. Where do you get this? Borboletta is right online. And my friend Kara oh. introduced me to it and our eyelashes were popping. I said, I need whatever you have. Yeah. Because I am not a fake eyelash girly. No. Did it once. The extensions, worst investment of my life. Oh, you actually did them. I did it. I, they looked amazing. But guess what? My eyelashes grow too fast. So like I would have to literally go. What a problem to have. Every like 10 days and get them refilled. I'm like, I don't have the time for this. And isn't it expensive? It's super expensive. And then you also have to sit there with your eyes closed. Like I need to be able like to be on my phone and pretend I'm working. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't close my eyes for like hours. I just can't. It's like I'm just laying there. That's hilarious. Um, but that's what I do. do what do you use on your face? I uh, What do I use on my face? So I have extremely large pores. So exfoliating is huge. So on top of just like cleaning it, I need an exfoliator, but I need a gentle exfoliator. So like not the St. Ives mm -hmm. or like something like that. It's actually, I just got it. It's Derma. Derma Logica. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's a milk based. Cleanser. Exfoliator. No, no, no. A milk based exfoliator, but it's a powder. This freaked me out. Okay. <laughs> so I buy it. Recommendation from the girl who does my facials. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, what is this? It feels great. My skin looks great after. She's like, oh, it's a very gentle exfoliator. I'm like, okay, awesome. She's like, here it is. I purchase it. I get it home that night. Well, not the night, that night, the next night. I open it. It's like a little twisty cap. So I do, 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 do. And there's like a little hole in there. I was like, oh, this is interesting. I go to like squirt some out as one would normally do. Yes. And just like powder in my hand. I think she would have warned you. I, I, yeah. We got a problem here. And I was like, <laughs> Um, what is this? You're like, did something happen? Did, yeah. did my liquid turn into powder? Wait, you know what I did? I threw that part in the trash. For whatever reason, I was like, I did something wrong here. I twisted <laughs> the cap. probably $30. Yeah, I, I twisted the cap and I shook it. I was like, maybe there's, it it's settled. as powder again. Again. And I was like, okay, I guess this I is. Like, could have used the stuff I just threw away. Yeah. I was like, I guess that's what we're doing. But it's, it's cool. It works, it's right? very, very, um. It's for sensitive skin. Mm -hmm. It's just like a very gentle exfoliator, like a little bit of a scratch, but not really. Yeah. Um, you can mix it with your um, cleanser and you're good to go. I really like it. I've been using it for two weeks now. I like that. It's nice. You I can use it every day because it's so gentle. It's I'm not like once that. a week. Mm -hmm. I actually have the Dermatologica neck cream. Mm. So you just like put it on your decollete. Wasn't it called decollet? Yeah, probably. Decollet. Um, but I have so many wrinkles because the way I sleep, I like squish my boobs. Mm. Like because I'm on my side. So my boobs oh, squish together yeah. and it creates like a wrinkle. What am I going to do about that? Nothing. I, there's, I'm going to get some good sleep. That's it. Yeah. I, I mean, you, the can, wrinkles. you can also use like a night cream for that area. I try and do that when I yeah. remember. But I don't always remember. And they also have the patches. Have you seen the patches that go on your skin? I it's like a V. 
I don't trust it. I used it before and it worked. But also it's expensive. I had no wrinkles the next day. The next day? but Because it's overly moisturized. But what about like a week? I think you have to use it every day. That's the problem. No. I don't have I'm the time for that. that. I don't. I'm going to forget. That's why I stopped doing it. Because I was like, <laughs> I had them for like different areas. Yeah. And then I just looked like ee, 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 going to bed. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Let's just throw on a muumuu and I look real awesome right now. Yeah. You know how I feel about muumuu. Robot and a muumuu. I'm into it. I'm into it. <laughs> but no, I do the exfoliator um a serum a hydrating serum and then during the day um spf spf always people pretty if we can say anything simple. spf is your key to good skin mm-hmm. like but i do the spf face yep. and neck and then depending upon if i'm going to be out my whole body but with basic sunscreen stuff. basic yes yeah. and i would like to say yes what would you like to say this is about this isn't for anyone else what I do for myself. I just oh, need to yeah. say that. This literally just – I'm 35, okay? And people might be like, that's not old. But listen, skin changes. Mm-hmm. Hydration of your skin changes. Texture of your skin changes. Plumpness of your skin changes. Yeah. So it's You'll just like it. take freaking Collagen. care of your skin. There's no shame in taking care of yourself, whether it be just having – um spf on or a good like skincare regimen you don't Mm -hmm. have to go through these links but we're just sharing what we do about what we do and what makes us feel good so um take it or leave it yeah hopefully you take it (laughs) save it later (laughs) put it in your pocket (laughs) um Mm. should we talk about the unbothered baddies of the week of the week yeah so uh we have a couple but i'd like to just shout out to skin industry in philly uh that's where i go for some of my work filler um specifically and they're just incredible like i said they do very they have a very minimalistic approach to what they do and also bella derma um i think med spa in eagleville i think i don't know if it's a med spa or spa but they actually do my hydrofacials and Botox and they're a bunch of lovely people and they always make me feel good about myself when I leave. I love it. So what about you? I'm going to shout out my friend Laura who luckily enough for me went to school to be a dermatologist and here we are. So I go to her dermatology office in New Jersey uh, where we grew up and she hooks it up with the Botox, the fillers, um, suggestions for laser, suggestions Mm -hmm. for the um, platelet under your eyes i don't know what that's called but rpf rpf yes and Um, we're just over here rbfing mm, resting botox Botox face face. so good so good yeah we love i love botox i love it i'm a huge fan if if i could have one suggestion suggestion of if someone wants to try anything botox people botox Oh, it's it's a, it's a game changer it and is. it's been around forever so like they've done it's studies. proven it's yes. literally proven you're not going to grow a third arm and go to a good person and you won't have any weird paralysis in yeah. like your eye and even so if hopefully you're getting yearly skin checks now yes. i feel like a mom but hopefully you're getting yearly oh, skin you checks that for sure um but with that, you know, talk to your dermatologist about Botox. It's also used to treat migraines and things like that. Jaw. Um, yep. People yeah. get in their jaw for when they have the, um, what's that jaw? Lock jaw? Or TMJ. TMJ. Yeah. Okay. So it, it can be used for anything. People put it in their armpits if they sweat too much or in yes. the palms of their hands. So it has many different uses. Yeah. But definitely talk to a professional. Obviously, we're here just giving you our advice and what we like. Um, but yeah, talk to your dermatologist about it. Like I go to for my skin check. Some Botox. Yeah. Some fillers. And listen. Let's call it a day. We feel great about ourselves. Yeah. Physically. <laughs> My brain might need some help. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll be another episode. Yeah, that's going to be a long one. A long one. Yeah. Mental health, y'all. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for joining us as we talk to you about our skincare regimens and the things we like to do to help us feel good physically. And, uh, you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at the Unbothered Moms, and you can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts, especially on Spotify and Apple. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everyone. Follow us, like us, review, subscribe. We will see you next week. See ya.